Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, it's Lauren Pryor again with the Environmental Learning Centers of Connecticut, and we are down in the Terra Lab on the Indian Rock Nature Preserve, where we have all of our residents temporarily housed, all of our reptiles, amphibians, and our owls temporarily housed from the Barnes Nature Center. And with us today, we're going to talk about turtles again. Uh, this time we're going to talk about our eastern painted turtles and we're going to take a look at two of our residents who are both eastern painted turtles but they have a slight difference between them that we'll we'll talk about that is a result of their care so first of all let's define a turtle so there are eight main turtle species in Connecticut, but that can go up to 12 if we're going to count the sea turtles that um, visit and tour Connecticut waters. Um, uh, turtles are reptiles, so they have scales. Okay, so our turtles, they're going to have scales all over their body. On their shell, we're going to call their scales scoots but they are reptiles, so they have scales, and their scales will shed. They shed as this animal grows, especially because you can think about, think to yourself, well, does a turtle ever leave its shell? The answer is no, it never leaves its shell. The only time a turtle is leaving its shell is if it's not alive anymore and another animal is eating it. Um, so the shell has to grow with the animal. So the scales, um, if I try to pull the scales up, that's not really happening. Scales are not stretchy, they're not flexible. So the scales shed in order for this animal to grow. And when the scales fall off, there are brand new bigger scales underneath. Once the animal is done growing, it's reached its adult size, the animal may continue to shed its scales just to keep its outer coat still healthy. We'll pick them back up in a little bit. But another rule to being a reptile, so we got our scales. That's the first rule. The second rule is that you've got to have a backbone. And that backbone makes it so that turtle is stuck inside their shell. I can actually pick her back up again. The backbone... It's on the inside of their body, but we can kind of follow this line on the carapace, the top of the turtle shell, going from the head down to the tail. That's where that backbone is going to be, but underneath inside. And we have a couple different shells here that we can look at as an example. This shell is a box turtle shell, so another native species to Connecticut, the eastern box turtle. But here we can see there's that backbone. And if we look really close, we can see some ribs coming off of the backbone. So that's really making it so that turtle is stuck inside their shell. They're fused inside of it. But those scale, scales are going to continue to shed so this animal can grow. Just as a comparison, we have a snapping turtle shell. So not all shells have the same coloration. Some might be a little bit more round. Some might be a little bit more oval. Some might be more domed. Some might be a little bit more flat. But no matter what type of shell you're looking at, each turtle shell no matter the species, is going to have 13 scoots. Okay, 13 of the main scales on the shell. So no matter the species, you're always going to find 13 scoots here. Um, this snapping turtle, the backbone happened to have been taken out on this example, but it would be right here. We can kind of see some remnants of the ribs. But here we have a much larger example. This is from a sea turtle. So no matter the type of shell we're looking at, okay, these backbones, since they are reptiles and it's fused to their shell, making it so they can never leave their shell. Their shell is their whole house. They're carrying it on their back their whole lives. It's growing a 
along with them as they age. And again, we can see the ribs. Those lines are the ribs of the turtle. So those are two rules so far. If you're a turtle, you've got scales, scoots on the shell, you've got a backbone, and you are cold-blooded. So the scientific term for being cold-blooded, we would call them ectotherms, which means they can't uh, maintain their own body temperature. So they've got to use the environment. They rely on the environment, the sun, to warm up, or they move into a shady spot to cool down. But let's move along to talk about these eastern painted turtles. Uh, they are highly, highly aquatic. So we can get a look at their feet. So these guys, they love, they're going to be in fresh water. So quiet, shallow bodies of water, bogs, wet meadows, some swamps, slow moving streams. They're highly aquatic. They love, love, love the water. They can go on land and they certainly do when females are ready to dig their nest out in um, their breeding season, but they're much more comfortable in the water. They've got feet that are highly webbed. So they act like paddles in the water. The Eastern Painted Turtle, we can recognize, um, they're called the Eastern Painted Turtle. They're distributed throughout most of North America, but they've got high yellow marks on their neck, their head. So it's kind of that coloration that gives them the name Painted Turtle. Another identifier is the bottom of their shell is going to be yellow. Sometimes it can be a rusty color, but more often than not, it's just yellow. Um, males will have longer claws. And typically, they're in the species, they're a little bit smaller. So males will be a little bit smaller than females. They're highly omnivorous. So omnivores, they're eating both plants and animals. So when they're living in those shallow waters, those bodies of waters, they're really gonna rely on the aquatic vegetation. They love the vegetation, hiding in it and eating in it. Aquatic insects, snails, small fish, tadpoles, so they're going to be eating both plants and animals. Turtles don't have teeth, but they've got these cool beaks. So they're really going to use their mouths to kind of crunch, munch, and then swallow it down whole. Since we are in late April now, we are in kind of the height of their breeding season. So breeding season, they emerge, the turtles emerge in March from their brumation period, going through the winter. So they come up from the muddy bottom of the lake where they're buried, buried down. And they're mm -hmm. gonna start to mate. So the males will kind of wave their front feet for the females. And then the females will go out to dig a nest and deposit their eggs. And that's kind of one high risk activity because when this female leaves the water, she might be crossing roads and that's where a lot of tur turtles might be getting hit by cars. Um, so especially this time of year where the females are coming out of the waters to dig their nest, you wanna be especially careful when you're driving. And if you see a turtle, you can always um, carefully pick it up by its shell and just move it across the road in the direction that it's headed. The female is going to lay typically about five, between five and ten eggs. And then she's just going to leave them to do their thing. Um, nests are usually prey items to raccoons and skunks. But once the babies hatch, um, about 80 days later, they're going to start to scurry around and long and find that water source to live in. And they're going to, as they're young, they're going to really, really depend on the aquatic vegetation before they begin to rely on other animals to eat. So 
But these animals, so we would never recommend or suggest taking a turtle out from the wild. We want to leave wild animals where they live in their natural environment. Um, but if you do have a domesticated turtle, you can. Turtles are a part of the pet trade. Uh, but one problem we see a lot is improper husbandry. So out in the wild, this animal is going to be responsible for finding their own food. Uh, they're responsible for getting to and from the water, drinking the water, finding their shelter, dealing with predators. Um, in human care, that's kind of all provided for them and they don't have to deal with predators. But turtles are a big commitment because they live long. The eastern painted turtle is believed to have a lifespan of over 30 years. So they are kind of considered to be a multi-generational pet. And a lot of problems we see with turtles is improper husbandry or care. So when we look at these two turtles, I want us to look at their two shells. One was a pet, and one was a wild animal that's now in our care. And they're both Eastern painted turtles. So they look really similar. But if we take a very close look, the turtle in my right hand has a misshapen shell. Overall, it looks kind of uneven. It looks like someone kind of pressed it in. And we know turtle shells are very hard, so it should not be flexible in any way. But this is an animal. that had an improper diet and has been affected by something we call metabolic bone disease. So that's caused by an inappropriate diet where the calcium and the phosphorus are out of balance. And those two items are very important for proper skeleton growth and development. And underneath these scoots, it is bone. So if you have an improper diet with those nutrients and they're out of balance, you're gonna have, start to have deformities pop up. So that's where this shell kind of looks like it's pressed in. If it's caught early enough, the effects can be reversible. Usually it's just a change in diet to make sure it's balanced, that they're getting all of the nutrients that they need. In very, very, very severe cases, the animal won't recover. And in some cases, um, the diet can be changed for the future, but there are some lasting effects. So this shell will be like this for the rest of their life even though she has a proper diet now. And the shell being like this, since it's not as severe, it doesn't impede the turtle in any way. They can still swim and eat and bask. But there are cases where it can be so severe that the animal won't be able to walk or do their daily functions. So that's something that we kind of can compare on wild animals versus domestic animals. When we do have a animal in human care, you want to make sure that you are providing all the proper nutrients and giving it um, proper care and proper husbandry like we are now. So this animal will be in our, our care for the rest of its life, just like our other turtle, even though its shell is perfectly fine. But that is something to consider if you do have a pet turtle. That is not a wild pet turtle. Um, and just like any.
any other animal, you want to make sure that you're providing it with its proper husbandry and you're doing um, proper research before you bring in this animal, especially an animal that has a long, long lifespan of 30 plus years. And if you do have that, then they're really rewarding animals to have as companions. They're very fun to watch swim, to watch them catch their food if they're eating. That's a little bit about our Eastern Painted Turtle an animal that does live here in Connecticut. They're kind of our, um, our number one turtle, our most numerous turtle that you're gonna be able to find. But we're gonna, I'm gonna put this guy now. So we are gonna be back on Monday for another Facebook Live on the Environmental Learning Centers of Connecticut Facebook page. We're going to be back at 10 a.m. for another environmental topic. If you have a topic that you are interested in and interested in learning about, you can comment on this video or message us and we'll make sure to cover it. But thanks for tuning in this morning. Have a great weekend and we hope you tune in again on Monday with us at 10 a.m.